Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In today's video, we will dive in into React classes, how to use them to render more complex components, and we'll render a simple shopping list where you will learn how to loop through data from your initial state. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Now that you know how to create a simple component, stateless component which just returns a bit of HTML, let's see how we can create more complex components and we call them classes. So in ES6, you can create a simply class like this, class app equals something. And then inside of here, you can have custom methods. If you want to create class application for React, you need to also include extends react.component. Okay, so this is the syntax to create React class. Remember, we need to export it. So we'll export class app that extends React component. And inside of here, we need to have a one method and that is a render method. So that is the only method required. And then we can simply move this return statement up inside of the render method. And that should be it. So if I delete the constant app, we should see exactly the same code inside of the browser. I'll just change this to some other name and age so we can validate that it's really working. And if I refresh the browser, we'll see that we've got a Terry and 30 rendering, but this time it's not a stateless component, it's a class. And that is useful if we want to set a state and use some something called lifecycle methods. Now let's delete the content from here. We won't need it anymore. And we will delete the other two components as well. So from now going on forward, we'll only work inside of the class app. We can also delete the greetings prop types because we don't have that component anymore. And inside of the render method, we'll create H1. And this will be shopping list. Okay, we'll try to build a shopping list. And under here, we'll have all the items that we want to buy. But firstly, we need to define the state of this app. So to do that, we need to include constructor method, constructor. And inside of here, we need to call super. Okay, super. And if we look at the documentation for super, super is a keyword that is used to call functions on an object's parent. Okay, so as you can see in this example, the first class, that's the React class component that we are extending with our app component. And we need to call the super for our state to kick in and be available. So we can later on remove the super so you know what you, what error you would get. But for now, just trust me that this is the right syntax. And to set a state, we simply include this state that is a simple object containing the state of our app. Inside of the state, we'll create buy items. So this will be an array of all the items we want to buy. For now, just include milk, bread and fruit. And this is our constructor method completed. If we look at the constructor inside of the React docs, you'll see that they also include props on the super and constructor. So class components should always call these with props inside. So let's add the props inside of constructor and super. And this would be our constructor method completed. Now we can go to the render method and start working on the rendering of our state. Okay, so initially we could easily make this empty, but I want to show you how to render through the state, how to render through array of items. And for that, we'll use the map method. So this dot state dot 
buy items. As you can see, it doesn't highlight our state because we need to wrap it in curly braces. So curly braces and inside of here, I like to wrap it on a new line. This state buy items dot map. And this will take our item and we'll use the arrow function to return something for each of the items. This is simple for each loop. We're taking all the items, we're looping through them. And for each of the items, we are returning paragraph with the item itself. Okay, the item itself like this, and we should return three paragraphs for each of our buy items from the state. So let's see if this works. Inside of the browser, we've got three list items. And when we look at the React DevTools, we should see these three listed and the state of the application should be listed under here. We've got the props, they are empty, but the state of the app has the buy items object with the array of three items. We've got an error. So while we're here, we can have a look at the error. Each child in an array of iterator should have a unique key. And we can fix that easily by setting a key on the P. Key on the P, huh? How, how nice is that? And this will need to be a unique identifier. So this could be, in our case, we know it, that each of these items are different. So just passing the item is fine. If you have a more complex data, most of the data should have ID or unique keys. So you need to define what your key will be. Just make sure they are unique. If we would have another item milk here, then this wouldn't work. Okay, so for now, we'll just keep it as item as well. If I save it, we don't have that error anymore. And each of the items have their own unique key listed inside of the dev tools. So this is how you loop through your state and array of data. And the next thing, the last thing we'll do in this video is again the destructuring. So instead of typing in this state by items, we can just destructure it before the return statement. Const and we only take the by items from the state and then we can simply reuse it inside of the return statement much shorter than typing it this state. So we're destructuring it inside of the render method just before the return statement. And then we're looping through the buy items like this. Saving it, refreshing should not make any difference. And we got it rendering nicely. If we go into the state and try to change one of the items to bananas, enter, you see how React automatically detects the change and updates the DOM for us. And this is the beauty of working with React and the state management. Okay, so very easy, very easy to use, very powerful. And hopefully now you see how powerful the state changes are and how quickly they render in the DOM. Much easier and much better, much faster than your standard jQuery DOM manipulation. And that's it all for today. Now you know how to create a React class and how to render some HTML on the page. If you're enjoying this React series, let me know in the comments what would you like to learn next. In the meantime, don't forget to check out all the VS Code and Webpack 2 tutorials if you want to learn about the modern front-end development workflow. Okay, you're still not sure what to do next. So let's hit the subscribe button here or watch the VS Code or Webpack 2 tutorials here. Okay, that's it. Simple. Simple, simple. It's very simple, guys. I'll see you next time.